Janice, what, what have you thought of what Robert's been able to do? You know, coming back on the timeline that he did and just being able to contribute here the first few weeks of the season? Well, obviously he's worked his tail off just to get back and play in the opening game. Uh, I think with him, you know, this is a sport that you have to play to get better at and gain confidence. Um, and so for him, you know, who obviously missed the off season and uh, a bit of training camp, every time he's out there, he just keeps getting more and more and more confidence uh, in his play, in his body. And so for him, you know, I think he's starting to uh, settle in in terms of just kind of getting back because it takes reps, right? It takes reps to get back in the flow, get on the same page, um, getting your stamina back to being in football shape. So uh, every day he's out there, he keeps getting more and more comfortable. John, I don't know how much experience you've had with guys coming back from that injury, but how much of the hurdle is, is a mental hurdle to get over to? Yeah, I think, I think you'd have to talk to him about that. Um, I know every person is, is, uh, is different. Right, every injury is unique in and of itself, um, and so I think you're talking about uh, what each individual has to go through to to get over that hurdle for themselves. Right, I, I don't think that's a, a cookie cutter um, way to come back, which I know is not what you're asking, but uh, you'd have to talk to him about that, just in terms of the process of going back. But but part of that to go back is eventually you have to go back and and play, right? right. Reason I ask is Aaron had said something today with about Bobby. He said I think it's just confidence, mm -hmm. um, getting that feeling back that he had a few years ago where he's dangerous after the catch. I think that last little bit is just putting his foot in the ground. Yeah, right? sure, really sure. Which which goes back to the point of every time he's out there, every time he does a different movement, right? It's getting back on the bike and doing it. And and what happens? You do something and oh, oh okay, right? I'm I'm good and I'm confident. And then you just keep getting getting over those things, but. Uh, obviously, I've talked to him about that from a, a personal standpoint, but generically speaking, again, any any time we all do something, right, you gain more confidence, and then uh, it builds on on each other. When you see the film, how close is he to the guy he he was before the injury? Well, I think I think everyone improves, right? And I don't think uh, you know we don't sit there and compare. Hey, two years ago or last year, and now what you are now. I think the goal is to improve each and every day, right? So as we've looked at prior seasons, here's what you can do better regardless. And don't let results get in the way of the process, right? So uh, for him, it's just working each and every day. And not to I understand what you're asking, but for us, it's just literally daily getting better and better and better and getting out there. And we've watched, you know, a thousand reps of film, but in this sport, you got to go out there and you do it. And that's the process he's in. So, you know, not to get into comparisons uh, of him in the past, but he works his tail off. And, uh, you know, I think, like I said, he's getting more and more confident every day. Well, I, I guess not so much in terms of the player he was to now, but what you can do with him. Is there still some things within this offense that he, that you, you know, he, he can't quite do? He's working his way into. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say can't do um, at all. Again, for him, it's just getting back into it. Right, he goes from missing the off season, a lot of training camp, and then you know game one he's back in. So obviously there's a process of building back up. Um, so I wouldn't say that uh, you know he's limiting us or we're limiting him to anything. It's just again gaining that confidence daily. With Mercedes, I'm not sure if he's going through something minor right now or not, but whatever. Um, I believe in Wesson knows for sure he's got the most consecutive starts for a tight end. Yeah, I mean, what does it say about a thirty-seven-year-old that he's he able to just fight through it? Up that he's a stud. I mean, he is—he is a pro's pro, right? The fact that he's still doing it, doing it at the level he's doing it, uh, how he attacks it daily—you wouldn't—you wouldn't know that he's, you know, set any type of record or played as long as he is because he's hungry every day, and he loves football and he loves the process. Um, he is a blessing to the room. You know, everyone looks up to him. He's a great leader for us. Uh, he's a calming voice. And seeing them out there every day, you know, everyone's got a, a smile on their face and they're a little bit more confident playing with them. So he's a stud, right? He is a pro's pro. He loves the game. He's physical. He brings a certain mindset to it. And kudos to him, right? I mean, it's, it says a lot about him, not only as a player, but more about his, uh, his integrity, who he is as a person, and just his competitive mindset. 
touchdown. I think that was a career long catch that Tyler had mm -hmm. on that, that 23 yeah. yard catch and run. There. What does a play like that do for a young? I know he's been in the league for a few years, but a yeah. guy that's you know looking to get his feet underneath the Yeah, ball. anytime you can make a play in a critical situation or in a game, right? Obviously, we go back to this confidence word. It continues to build off that because you've done it, right? In practice, you build confidence because you build hab habits and things happen. But when you're under the lights, when it counts, right, and you make those plays, it just builds confidence because you can see yourself doing that, right? So now, all of a sudden, uh, everything becomes a little bit cleaner, a little bit clearer, a little bit more intentional at practice because you, you've made those plays. You can visualize yourself making those plays. And a lot of times for, for guys, it makes them uh, hungry to do that much more to, to keep doing that in game situation. So again, he's another guy and I, and I love my room for the fact that these guys work their tails off and he's a guy that does the dirty work, uh, works his tails off, does everything right. And so again, for him to uh, make that play is happy for him. When things don't go right for him blocking, where typically is the issue? Is it um, just confidence and in getting into a guy or is it I Yeah, um, m most of the time, effort's never an issue. Most of the time it's technical things, um, you know, and those things are going to happen. And so for him, it's just getting back to fundamentals, right? So, uh, and that's for all the guys, right? If something happens and you know, it's not the result you want on a block. A lot of times it goes back to something simple fundamentally. And, uh, you know, so we correct those things, talk about it, hat placement, footwork, hand placement, um, and then they go back out. So sometimes you just kind of have to reset fundamentally and go back out. So that's really a lot of times, I know I've talked about that in the spring, but a lot of the magic happens by being good fundamentally, right? If they're talented enough, which obviously they are, a lot of times the success or lack thereof deals with the fundamentals, which is obviously why we go out there and you know practice every day. So after Sadie's mm -hmm. and Bobby, what's the identity you guys see for Josiah? Well, for all these guys, they play a ton of different roles. That's the best part about tight end. I tell them all the time, we can line up in a thousand different spots. We get to do everything under the sun. Now that's the challenge too, right? They have to be good in a lot of areas. They have to perform a lot of different techniques. Obviously, they have to be sharp mentally to be able to line up in all these different spots. And he's no different, right? I mean, he's a guy that you can line up all over the place, and he, he does a lot of different roles. So, uh, you know, we never want to put a guy in the corner and say, here's what you do, and, and this is your role for him. And for all those guys in our room, they wear a lot of hats. And that's the fun part of playing the position. And obviously, you can be more creative uh, the more guys you have that you can do that with. Is he your best guy on the move? Like, you know, when you've got to move a guy out or, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't want to use the word best. I mean, they're, they're, they're all talented at doing that. Again, I know you guys have seen them, you know, play a lot of different roles. They can play in space, play in the box. Uh, he's gifted at doing it for sure. But like I said, you know, the, the other guys have, have performed those duties as well. John, your decision to come to Green Bay um, after leaving the Jets, did you talk to Matt before? Did you have other guys here that you worked with? Uh, not here, no. Uh, I had had a relationship uh, or knew Matt uh, prior to coming here in terms of other staff members. Uh, knew of mutual friends, right, which is how it works in the business, but more just a, a relationship with Matt.